Hi, everyone. Welcome to Unfiltered, a show where we have off-the-cuff conversations with smart folks on topics at the fringe of cybersecurity. My guest today is Andy Abercrombie, the Chief Security Officer at Novellus. When he's not busy busting the bad guys, Andy is known for making amazing chutneys. Andy's um, somebody that's bridged the gap between being a technologist to being a CISO. He's worked across uh, three countries and um, he's highly opinionated on the subject of security assessment work. He knows what he's doing because he's um, worked with a number of firms and you know dealt with a number of different ways that you can actually assess your security. So we thought we'd have Andy on today uh, to give us uh, a look into how you can actually run security assessments right from, you know, the basics of a vulnerability assessment all the way up to a high below, uh, high end red team assessment. So Andy, thanks for coming on and, um, you know, sure. welcome to Unfiltered. Happy to have you. you. Happy to be here. So, it's good to catch up with you. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? So this is, this is our lockdown conversation. Normally Andy and I uh, <laughs> catch up in India over, uh, over a drink and some good food. So this is actually very lame for us, but we're going to do our best. All right. So I'm going to jump right into it, Andy. Um, you know, security assessments, everybody says that they do them. Everybody does them different ways. You've got consultants that do them. Uh, you know, you can do them well, you can do them badly. Uh, and not everybody really knows what they're getting into. So, you know, I thought we would start right at the top, which is more around the difference between, you know, a vulnerability assessment, a pen test and a red team assessment. So maybe you could just give us your thoughts on how you see those. Sure. Um, I guess when, when I think about those different assessments, you know, a lot of it is, you know, what's the outcome you're looking for and what do you want to know? Um, you know, vulnerability assessment in my mind is finding uh, where you have known gaps in your network, pretty standard stuff. Uh, I know that people use the term vulnerabilities, but it's really just finding out where you need to be do better at patching and configuration management and some things like that. Um, in my mind, if you take that up a level, and usually off the back of a vulnerability assessment is a pen test, where they do more, much more creative uh, attacking, um, you know, they, they take the vulnerability and they actually try to assess it and like, does it work, does it not work? And a good example here is I've, I've had um, you know, plenty of experience where we hire a company, bring somebody in and they'll tell us something's wrong. And I go, yeah, but could you exploit it? And especially ironically on some older stuff where they couldn't do it, as much as it may say, well, it's a higher critical finding, but when I push them to, well, can you exploit it? Can you get root, can you get admin, can you denial of service it? and they can't do it, that's the kind of work that'd be done in a pen test. Well then, in my mind, the criticality goes down. Yeah, we need to address it and we wanna be secure and patched and, and all of that. But the reality is, if you can't actually uh, you know, use the weakness to your advantage, well, uh, that's a little bit different. And in my mind, that's where the pen test, uh, is more like the rubber meets the road. Um, and I'll, I, I truly like to do a blind pen test, that way they tell me what, what works for them and how they can get in. Uh, that's where I tend to go. Um, and then um, I guess if you take that to another level, it's kind of the red team, blue team exercises or you know, something along the lines of a cyber range where you're actually setting up something. You've got a team dedicated to try to get in. you got a team dedicated to try to catch them. And then they're both watching each other and trying to either whether it's evade or adjust. Um, and that, that, to my mind, is the upper, even upper level where um, you know, you've got kind of the, the offense-defense kind of uh, interaction. Uh, honestly, I've not done a whole lot of that. Um, the other one that I like to do is sometimes call it an objective-based test. Um, and this is where um, a lot of times we'll say to a company, hey, we want you to get a hold of an executive's account or try to get data out of an executive's account. And so instead of it being, well, I'm going to go tell you where your vulnerabilities are, or I'm going to try to take over a web server or fish somebody, it actually becomes targeted. And then it becomes down to them to figure out, well, how would I achieve this objective? And to me, that's a lot of times how the the, the threat actors look at it or a bad guy, they go, well, I want to, I want to get into Sahir's email. How would I do that? Cause you know, now I've, that's my objective. Um, and then we, we, we've done that before. Um, and you end up having a different way of thinking about it. Um, and then they come back and say, well, this is how we went about it. It's what we found. This is how we, how it happened. And here's how you would prevent it. Yeah. And I think that that's a very, you know, you raised two interesting points there. The first was the difference between the pen test and the red team, because that's, um, you know, I think really where the lines are blurring, people get what the VA is, but they don't understand how a pen test differentiates from a red team. And I think you articulated it well. The pen test is essentially mm -hmm. the vulnerability assessment, but going the extra exploitation step. 
but yeah. it's more like, okay, I can blast Metasploit out across your network to 20 different things, right? As <laughs> opposed to the red team, which, you know, as, as you put it, is more collaborative, the blue team and the red team. You know, the, the red team's trying to hide. So it's more pirates versus ninjas, just pillage everything you can see versus go <laughs> stealthy. And I stole that yeah. from somewhere. I, I, I don't remember where I read that. I did not make that up myself. But, you know, I think that's really the difference and, and not many people get that. Like some people are ready for the pen test, but they're not necessarily ready for the red team because they don't even have a blue team um, and they yeah. don't know how to run that collaborative process. So, and, and most firms that want to, you know, nowadays when people want to, um, you know, talk about the, the latest hype in security, they'll take a pen test and they'll call it a red team assessment, but they're two very different yeah. things. Yeah, that's marketing just getting in the way. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, the next point you made was was to, to, to coverage and sort of rules of engagement. And I like the idea of, you know, obviously you get the opportunity to make it business linked. Have, have you uh, thought about doing stuff which is sort of um, simulating an, um, a, a particular threat group? For example, you've got like the MITRE attack mapping. So do you, have you thought of the idea of saying, okay, go simulate APTX, Dancing Bear, Fancy Bear, whichever bear we have you know, this week. Um, do you ever go to your consultants and say, hey, could you go and run a simulation of that group with these goals? So I guess in my kind of current role, we haven't gone to that level. Um, in other roles, we would consider it. I know we, we've done stuff like the, you know, the attack trees and you go down this, what could happen and how would they do it. Um, so, yeah, I think to your point, when you try to start mimicking the, the actual threat actors that you're worried about, that's when it really gets into that much more targeted red team or objective based. Um, and so, yeah, taking it to that, um, you know, we're worried about this APT or this threat actor, and then it becomes more targeted, te uh, sorry, targeted attack, targeted test. Um, and then it, it, I think it's leaning towards that objective of, well, if we worry about nation state, if we're worried about, uh, you know, these type of actors, we're going to try to mimic that and then see if we can catch it. And at the same time, if you do the blue team or the, the latest term I've heard is purple team, you get that more collaborative that, you know, here's what they, they would do and here's how we saw it or vice versa. This, this is what they would do and we didn't see it. Why didn't we see mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. And so, and, and so when, when you do sort of goal setting, um, obviously there's going to be the element of time, right? The, the bad guy yeah. doesn't have the restriction of time for the most part, right? Whereas, you know, the pen tester or the red team is going to have to finish this in a couple of weeks, maybe a month, right? Um, so do you ever, like, um, you know, you mentioned doing zero knowledge assessments. Uh, do you ever consider saying, yeah. hey, guys, okay, look, I know that a serious adversary is going to figure this stuff out later. So I'm going to give you a, a jump start on certain <laughs> things, right? Like, do you yeah. ever do that? Yeah. Um, yes, of course. Um, I think... I think of the blind stuff for just a revalidation that our stuff works the way it should. And hence it's a good thing to do regularly to, to find where you've got gaps and you'll know about them. But no, no, to your point, especially with the cloud stuff coming up and being bigger, um, what we, we like to do or, or what the way I like to think about it is uh, to your point, I need to know that a certain environment is secure. And it's, I guess the old way of doing it is I'm putting a new web server into production, then I'll have somebody do a pen test or, or one of these type of assessments, hence I know it's secure. Well, these days you don't know what's out there and things change so much. I mean, there, there's so many new services offered by AWS, and, you know, Amazon and, and Azure and Google that you know companies can just stand them up and you don't know. So I regularly look at uh, hiring companies to say, you know, I will give you my exact, cloud footprint. What I need you to do is to take that and if you have, you know, obviously they have to have the right knowledge, but then go probe that and this, this smaller namespace, these smaller services, because I really want to know, you know, can they get in and what can they find and give them a little more license, but it's more targeted because I need, to your point, I need the right scope tested. I need the right outcome. I need the right validation that the controls in that area are working as, as my team tell me they are or the business tell me they are. And, and, and do you, um, you know, uh, uh, usually a firm will set some sort of rules of engagement and this could range mm -hmm. from just the basics like, okay, you can't touch these ranges or you work within these office hours in case, you know, something goes wrong or it yeah. could be, you know, limitation on um, the domain, right? So you go, you know, you go IPv4 only versus, you know, social engineering on the phone or even in-person attacks or, you know, um, you know, Wi-Fi related stuff, right? So mm -hmm. uh, is this something that uh, you typically look for? Like, uh, when because it, it's very easy when you look at the goal and say okay the bad guy's going to get to this but there's a difference between him getting to it across the internet 
versus the fact that he's going to get a job in my office and plug in as an insider, <laughs> right? Which is perfectly possible depending yeah. on what it is you're protecting, right? Uh, so, like, do you have any thoughts on setting the, the sort of ROE and what they can do, or more importantly, what they can't do? Or do you give them more, like, cut launch as you get to trust the firm? To be honest, that's usually a function of upper management. Um, and in his, his history, uh, if you've ever had a bad experience with a pen test firm, then that companies a lot of times are shy about stuff. Um, if it's up to me, I, I'm more on the, I need to know. So I need you to try to break into it or, or, or take it down within reason, AKA do it at night, do it off hours. But what I really want is that, that, that more validation or, or that, um, that litmus test of, is it actually going to, to, to stand up to the, the testing? Uh, but again, I think the big the bigger problem I've had here is a lot of times you know, with with uptime and management and maintenance windows. There's a lot of time not the appetite for that. Granted, it is um, industry specific. Um, when I worked in manufacturing, a lot more relaxed about things, except for you know don't stop manufacturing. When I worked in financial services, it's a lot more you know don't mess with anything, and you have to get so many more checks and balances and approvals just to get a penetration test done. So. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of times it's, it's we're definitely related to the industry, but I'm, you know, when it comes down to it, it is, one, you need to be clear on what those rules are. And two, if you can, you, you opt for the best and most effective test because that's what you're paying for. And that's what you want to know. And if somebody can't actually test it to the degree that you want, well, it's not as useful. And, and I know you have strong opinions on this when you said, uh, you know, sort of the best and most effective test. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's pretty much a given that the test is only as, as good as the tester, right? Um, and it's yeah. very easy for a firm to come in with great collateral or say, hey, we're going to, you know, have these rock stars come in and do this stuff, right? <laughs> so how do you go from that to, like, figuring out that the guy that's doing the assessment is really, you know, really got the goods? Do you, like, interview these guys? Uh, do you insist on a particular profile? What are you going to do? Yeah, look, I, I'm going to say that's one of the toughest challenges because – Everybody thinks they're a good driver. Every pen test firm thinks they're a good pen test firm. And obviously there's a sales aspect for that. There's another aspect, which is your point there about can the person actually do what they say they can do and how good do they do it? How well I've, I've had everything from, um, you know, we use, uh, people who come from three letter backgrounds, like in the government to the other side, which is, well, every one of our pen testers is a developer. So they'll just write exploit code. And I'm like, Interesting. They're going to write exploit code within a week for my special app, whatever. But this is it. It's 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 really hard. Um, and even then, you know, I I come from a technical background, but now I, I'm I'm not up on the latest attacks. You know, I've talked about this plenty of times. I uh, I can understand and, and talk a lot of the lingo, but you know, if I interview the engineer and he's on the call and we're trying to, I mean, I'm I, I've got to make an assessment based on you know just how he describes what he would do. I have not gone to the level of interviewing individually and really putting it to them, but I, you know, I can see the value there. If anything, I'm more likely to give somebody a, a chance on like a blind pen test. And then if they do well, use them for other stuff. Um, I also look for recommendations from other people that have used them. Um, but then I think one of the, one of the tips somebody gave me once before, which I really like is they shouldn't be talking in terms of technology and, um, high level vulnerabilities, they should actually be talking about the type of attacks that would actually happen. You know, I want somebody to talk about a pass the hash and how they're going to take advantage of it and, or a golden ticket. I want that level. I don't want the, Oh, we'll see if you need to patch this or if it's a critical here. Like I, and, and the more people that can talk to that and how they would exploit it or the tools they would use, that's the person you want. So it's more that offensive mind rather than the pure business technology, high level mind getting there. Well, sometimes that's tough, especially if you don't have an expert on your team. Um, so you got to make that judgment call somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's, that's a pretty fair point. You know, a lot of folks come in and they're sort of saying that we're going to, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, like you said, write exploit code and you're going to throw a zero day at your stuff. But actually that's, <laughs> you know, if, if you look at likelihood versus impact, right, you're not yeah. very likely to get hit by Joe bad guy who's going to use a zero day on you. If you are, I mean, he must really want something <laughs> out of novellas, right? I mean, it's more yeah. likely that there's going to be a reused password or something. So sometimes we focus on that really high-end stuff. But what we really want people to do is say, hey, look, we're going to make sure these basics are done. Um, yeah. and we're raising the bar for 80% of the bad guys. And once you've got that covered, then yeah, sure. Go for the fact that the guy's going to replace, you know, your router firmware with something he wrote like last night. You know, sort Well, the other that. thing is when you're agreeing time and scope, they never really go, oh, if you want us to do that, it's another two weeks to do it properly. They never say that. And that's really 
you get down to it, the hygiene stuff and the, like you said, the messes, the metasploit, some of that, that's the, that's the bare bones. But it's the, oh, we've got this, it's either custom or I just found out about this. That doesn't, that doesn't happen in two hours. That takes time. And yeah, they don't really quote that. So, you know, it's a little bit of lip service, even if the, yeah. even if the person do it, right? Because if they didn't scope it in and you got a deadline, they're, they're not going to be writing malware code. Yeah, and I mean, if they're writing, uh, you know, zero days in, in two weeks, uh, they're probably in the wrong industry. They should be doing something <laughs> else, but anyway. Yeah, or you're paying a lot. <laughs> or you're paying a hell of a lot, yeah. And it's a team, it's a team. And one guy's doing that while the other folks are doing everything else, so. Yeah, you know, but I mean, th these are great red flags because these are the things, you know, when someone's going into this for the first time, they're, they're expecting mm -hmm. that, oh, I'm going to get like a super sophisticated team. And sometimes what you really just want is really good process. Um, at least that's, that's mm -hmm. what I see. I think that the, you know, it's, it's easy enough at a technology level to run a fairly decent assessment and find valuable things for most businesses. The problem is most people are not necessarily focused on, like you said, the business goal, which I think is important. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what I've not had done really well. I've not had many, pen test red team firms talk to me about well what are you worried about like who attacks your industry or your company instead they just go okay we'll do this type of assessment uh, here's the rules and then you get back in that vapt red team blue team kind of thing instead of well okay you're in financial services and you have kind of customer data and you have this kind of footprint on the internet and now you're in the cloud okay what, what are you worried about? What would you, and coming back here, what would you like to mimic thing? I actually don't have many that, that I remember that talk to me in those kind of threats and attack level. Hence, then they adjust the test to that. Yeah. Um, it's probably more me going, uh, here's what I'm worried about. I want you to test that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that's probably a little bit of a maturity thing. And then to the point of finding a good one, there's so many commodity ones out there. You <laughs> can just throw, 20, 30 K at somebody and then you're going to get a test. Well, that doesn't mean it's the best test, the great test. And then it comes back to the scope of, well, if I want to test my cloud environment, I need to find somebody who knows about that. You know, yeah. we've been thinking about uh, as we continue moving down this path and, and doing different things and using newer services, who's going to you know, test that adequately. Yeah. There's a lot of data analytics stuff going on. There's so many Azure services that are popping up that are all about analytics, things like Databricks and, uh, yeah. What was the other one the other day? Uh, HD Insights. It, it's stuff that's out there that I, I have no idea who's penetration testing it or, or actually seeing if it has vulnerabilities. But if I hire somebody, they should be able to test about or talk about that, the threats, how they would attack it, models, data science, ML, like all of that stuff. And most of them don't do that. Yeah. Not at all. Just go, okay, well, we'll scan it. <laughs> they might go to fuzzing, but. Yeah. And that's, that's it. The, the cloud environment's changing so fast, unless it's a standard web app, API, something like that. Yeah, that people talk about not the true. Well, hang on, where's your data? How would you get there? And you go back to that a bit objective based assessment of you know, what am I going to target to get there? And the, and the tests don't usually go that way. It's not that it can't, but a lot yeah, of, them it, are you know, and, and, and in doing this for, you know, like decades now, what I found is really that you, you want somebody who's a great generalist. It sounds very, you know, it sounds sort of counterintuitive, but basically what you want is somebody who's going to get into that assessment and, Go from, okay, you know, I'm attacking the web app, but now I've encountered the fact that it uses Lambda functions and I need to think about mm. how I'm going to exploit those and I'm going to do something with containers after that and SSRF or whatever it is, right? <laughs> so you, you yeah. want someone who can, can think on their feet, figure out a way pretty quickly because as you said, the space is too vast and you, it's not like you're going to say, hey, I'll hire a cloud security firm, I'll hire an on-prem guy, then I'll hire a wireless mm. guy. I mean, you could do it that way if you've got, you know, financial services budgets, but not everybody does. Yeah, and it, it's nice if they know the types of defensive techniques you have, like if you have MS advanced threat analytics, right? So therefore, they because they know they can't just run some of these loud and proud scans and, oh, that's going to pick up as a, you know, a, as an alarm on your network. Knowing what yeah. your defenses are, and it depends on the assessment because sometimes you don't want them to and you want to make sure they work. That's what I usually do. But sometimes you do want them to, to be that next level malicious hacker and, uh, that goes back to the whole, what's the threat you're facing? Is it, you know, the script kitty guy down the street or is it one of these nation states that, you know, got the time, the patience. And if you really want to do that, well, you need to mimic that. Yeah. So. And, 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 you know, there's now, there's a fair amount of stuff you can do um, automated. So like there are open source frameworks like, you know, Mitochondria and um, 
there's, there's quite a few and you can get commercial tools which do like breach attack simulation stuff as well, right? So there's now sort of uh, in a few CISOs minds, the idea of do I need to do this in-house or can I do it automated? And you know, there are trade-offs obviously, <laughs> right? So how, 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 what, what side of the fence do you fall on? Like you could buy your way into a tool yeah. that for you. I honestly, that's a function of budget. Um, in the industry I'm in now, um, it's, it's hard to sell people on that kind of a thing. And, um, even, even if you wanted to do it, you need to find good people. And then we're back to the whole, how do you assess people? How do you make sure? And a lot of times you might hire somebody, get them to know your environment and then train them up. And so then they can take that on, but then they're, they're only as good as their skill. So, you know, that, that might take a little while. Um, but in other industries, uh, you know, we're back to that constant or regular red team, blue team, cyber range, you know, things go through a, a much more rigorous testing process. Those kind of situations where, you know, hard money is involved and account takeover could lead to, you know, yeah. whole millions of dollars or, or, you know, hundreds of thousands of losing, going out of somebody's account. Those types of situations are different. Um, and they're, they're much more willing to throw a budget at it. And in those situations, you know, it's, it's, it makes better sense to have a, a dedicated team standing by um, and hence much more rigor around what goes into production, how it's tested and, and those kind of processes. So, um, and I, you know, coming from a technology background and I and love playing with the tech, I'd love to have a team of people that did that, especially, you know, you build the trust and the excitement and, and that's a fun environment to work in. Uh, and then bring in maybe other teams to help them or to attack them in case they do the reverse, they do, they play the blue team role. Um, but yeah, I, I've always found it a function of budget. And um, it's, it's just hard to maintain the skill level. And so, you know, going back to finding a, a, a company just to do a good test, well, if you're going to build it in-house, in it's going to take some time. And the way people move around these days, it's a bit tough. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, one thing I've always liked about, about you is you've always had this way of, um, you know, you've, you've always advocated that your, you know, your blue team thinks offensively, even if they can't act offensively, right? Mm. That they need to yeah. understand the mindset of the adversary. We're in that know your enemy kind of frame of mind. Absolutely, right? And, you know, and that's a difficult balance because, you know, blue teams want to do the sexy stuff when actually defending stuff is actually harder these days than often mm. breaking in, right? So how do you like, how, how do you do that? How do you keep your guys uh, clued in when obviously they can't be hands-on and everything, but you know, is it something that you like, basically, how do you keep them in the zone? Is it, is it more that you use the cadence of the red team to get them, uh, you know, kind of marinating with, you know, someone who thinks offensively or, or do you keep trying to build that offensive uh, mindset into your blue team? Uh, it's more about, I think, maintaining that offensive mindset and keeping up with technology changes and, and you know, new announcements, everything from Black Hat, DEF CON to, uh, you know, what's the latest pen test? exploit zero day that kind of stuff so it's it's not easy is the short answer but you, you know a combination of making sure they understand how the world's changing aka the threats the attacks things like that the new tools that are coming out and, the, and so it's always this kind of constant education training and then where possible getting to use it um you know if you can play around with it you understand how it works well then you know it's a little bit easier on your side to go actually i, I know that's possible how would i stop it um a lot some of the stuff we've been doing recently is, um, you know, if, if you think you like a technology, well, install it in a lab and actually do a pen test against it. And then you get to see, well, you know, does it stop it? How does CrowdStrike match up to, you know, semantic endpoint protection, to Cisco AMP, to, you know, the next and greatest, and you actually get to see what happens because that's where the rubber meets the road, regardless of what, what the team say or what the salesman says. Um, and so, you know, if you think about it, knowing and you've seen the tool and the education, but then trying it, and see if it works and then turning around and going, okay, how would I stop that? You know, that's, right. that, the, that's the part. That's the, and I'm not saying it's easy. Like you said, the blue team are kind of behind the eight ball at all times, but uh, you want to keep somebody interested. You got to keep that kind of that edge and they have to have that knowledge. If they just sit around and all they do is watch logs. Yeah. They're going to walk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're not going to be as good at their job either. Right. Yeah. So somebody seeing that these, you know, exploits work and you can inject C code or some, you know, like actually seeing it really will scare the pants off of them and get them thinking. Yeah. And, and I remember you and I had a conversation <laughs> once where I half facetiously mentioned to you that um, if you had to only do one thing, patch or look at Active Directory, uh, you should look at Active Directory. And you were one of the first CISOs that actually got that, uh, you know, so there's like these low hanging fruit. And I always think like Team Blue doesn't always know about these things, you know, 
uh, yeah. stuff like local admin creds, Active Directory, Kerber Roasting, um, you know, PowerShell. Now we've moved on to C Sharp, you know, on the adversary yeah. side, right? But um, yeah, th there isn't really a good um, way to always be on top of it. But, um, you know, do you think it makes sense that people who are starting out with this stuff do their research first to get these low hanging fruit covered? Because th the thing that I always think about is, okay, you're going to pay someone, right? Maybe, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this. But if you've just left the door open and you've not done those sort of <laughs> basics, they're, they're just yeah. going to take your money and they're going to phone it in for one day um, and come back six months later and redo it and use the next one. Yeah, we use the term hygiene because I guess to your point, you can pay for a sophisticated test, but like if you've left the door open or if you've left the, left the window unlocked, right? It's, yeah, there, there's this level of hygiene that you need to do. And this is where, you know, even the standard VAs and pen tests are very useful just to find what you've missed and what you don't know about. Uh, you know, I've, I've been with companies that looked at doing a constant scan of their internet environment just to see when something changes. And therefore they go, well, hang on, was that planned? Do we know about it? Why did it change? What's happened? You know, almost things of that that ilk, but yeah, you've got to do the hygiene things. You've got to make sure. Uh, and then the rest of it, I think is risk-based and you have to, you have to judge. So like you said, you know, knowing if you should be patching, sure. But knowing how your AD is configured yeah, that's important. And, you know, if you're starting out, um, and I've been thinking about this a little bit, depending on like training people up, knowing how just some of the core stuff functions is key before you even try to exploit it. Knowing how AD works, right? Knowing the protocols, knowing how it's supposed to work. What's the point? Like, and it's a directory, of course, just kind of show you where stuff is, you know, how that's linked into DNS, how that's linked into passwords, how that's linked in, like you said, local admin. And then even before the attacks, if you can understand that, well, then the attacks start to make sense. Well, okay, if I'm an attacker, I'll use that against them. I'll find it. Well, mm -hmm. we maybe catch that depending on how you do it. Sometimes it's hard. If they get on a machine and it's valid, it looks like a valid request. So there's other things we have to do. Sometimes use decoys and other methods, but you're exactly right. Knowing what's supposed to happen helps you determine what's anomalous, what's erroneous, um, and, and, and skilling up in that from the from the network side to the system side and how those systems fit together. Mm -hmm. That helps you get a penetration tester. All right, and so now going up the stack, right? We've talked about you know what your team should do. We've talked about you know what you should look for in another firm. Uh, the hard part for you is. Uh, one, how do you sell it to management? Because, you know, you might be in an organization like like you've gone all the way from financial services to manufacturing, mm. two very different worlds, right? So yeah. how do you kind of convince folks that this is worth doing, worth spending money on? And how do you contextualize results to management? Because, you know, one thing is there's going to be something broken. By, by design, you should hopefully find something. So, mm. you know, there's that dichotomy that, you know, in a, in a less mature organization, they say, are you doing your job, right? Like, why stuff open? Why can they break <laughs> in, right? And, yeah. you know, we've seen this before. So how, how do you deal with this? And you're a fairly diplomatic guy. So I'm wondering what your <laughs> thoughts here is. No, it's, it's not always easy, right? Um, most firms, most companies these days know you need to do some kind of test. And they either have a, a requirement for an annual test or something like that. So that's not, it's not as bad as you as you think when it comes to having to sell it. But I think to your point, you have to know what hits home, right? What, what matters to them and, and then express the outcome or the possibilities in those terms, whether it's a, you know, an outage of availability, compromise of data, uh, accounts, uh, you know, we could be losing money. It, it, you, you have to talk in those risk terms. So one thing all companies can understand, even at a very simple nature is the risk part. So that's what I, I bring it back to. And, and that usually gets their attention. Uh, it helps explain, it helps make it uh, uh, useful, contextual to them. Uh, and again, when you're thinking with management, yeah, you stay away from the, the different types of attacks. They're not going to understand what a, the pass the hash or, you know, credential dumping. No, no, no. The, that's not what you tell them, but you do have to keep it high level enough and, and the risk. And then almost the due diligence piece of we need to do this to make sure these things can't happen. And you know, again, I was saying these days, most companies know that, but then depending on the kind of test you want to do, you got to be able to explain that why. And I think once they understand why, it, it's a much easier conversation. Great. So, so I'm, I'm going to leave you with two like out of the box questions. So uh, the first is <laughs> worst, worst um, security assessment experience that you can think of. Uh, that's question one. And the, the final question is, if you had one word of advice, you meet another CISO at a bar and he's like, I'm thinking <laughs> about this one piece of advice. Maybe you've had three beers, so you're, you're giving us candid advice. So worst assessment, a uh, sort of thing that you've experienced and what advice would you give to somebody? So worst assessment, 
Um, the first thing that comes to mind on that one is we had a, we had a firm do a vulnerability pen test kind of thing. And then, you know, depending on the company and we didn't really talk about this, you might've agreed what the output is, uh, you know, it, minimum it's a report findings, blah, blah, blah. Right. But they did the assessment. And then afterwards I asked for the output of the vulnerability scan. And I even said, well, did you use, you know what? And they kind of looked at me like, what are you talking about? Like, what well, did you use Nessus or what did you, you know, cause I, we, I don't remember us having talked about it at that time, but we were here with the end and I'm going, well, can you just give us the output, like the full output so we can see everything from high to informational and uh, kind of got this deer in headlights look <laughs> and all of a sudden made me really question the work they had done. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mainly because they couldn't, they couldn't provide the data. And in the end, I think what they did is behind the scenes, they went back and rescanned it, and they provided it because the the timestamps on the files were uh, okay new, if you know what I mean. So the moral so, of the story is, if you're testing, <laughs> go log everything. Well, and I guess to your point there, and when you do these tests, depending on which one you do, you always need to have that. Um, go back and look at what they did, and check the logs, and see what you did and didn't pick up, and that that kind of Sometimes it's collaborative. Sometimes it's, well, here's the IP address we use. See what you can see. Right. But yeah, I, I, it made me doubt the, 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 the level of confidence in their work after they didn't seem to be able to provide the data. And if you think about it, they're testing us. Theoretically, we should have access to that data. Yeah. Um, and they agreed to give it to us. So, I mean, they didn't say no. Good sure. point. And, and, and this is, this is one that I've, it. this is one I've experienced as well, where sometimes you'll have a business owner. Um, you know, I, I had a situation once like ages ago where, something happened at the time when a test was going on and it came down to proving whether the test, like something went down. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And the question was, was it related to the assessment? And because, you know, back then, I mean, it was best practice for us. We used to just log everything and we used to like start a screen uh, script capture when you were actually, uh, you know, in your terminal. Yeah. So we were able to go back and say, look, we never even touched that IP address at the time when this happened. But that would not have been a fun situation to be in if, you know, there's no innocent until proven guilty if something goes down and you were testing at that time. You know what, that's, that's a good point. I, um, I am used to exactly what you said because you need to be able to um, plausibly deny that you didn't do it. And it's the only way to do that is to actually log and show here's exactly what we did and when and where. And um, yeah, that, that, I think that's commonplace. So hence why when I asked for the data, it was kind of... <laughs> odd yeah uh, i can't say we've used that company anymore <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure <laughs> and um, and so the, the final question so one word of advice at a bar to another CISO who's thinking about doing security assessment work and be as candid as you like one word of advice oh i must admit i uh i wasn't i wasn't exactly prepared for that one um, yeah, no that's why i asked you <laughs> I want to make your life um, no more softballs. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably going to answer this one a little bit different. I, I'm going to say make sure you can trust your provider. Um, and I think that comes back to a couple of things. One, for, you know, the simple ones like I expressed, I, I, I don't think they actually did what I asked them to do or if they did, maybe not the way. But more so, if we get into that, um, you want them to do a type of attack. You want to know that they're qualified, that they can speak the language, that they know offensive security, and that you're going to get the right outcome. But the only way to do that is to spend some time with them, build that trust. Um, and in many cases, you might have to do a simple test so that you kind of build that to later then do some more of the advanced stuff, right? So a simple, whereas later you get them into the red team, blue team. But um, the salesmen will say one thing, the engineers might be different, again, everybody's a good driver. Nobody's a bad driver and they all think they're amazing, but really trying to find the right one that uh, can execute and get you what you want is tough. So therefore the best way to do it is you're going to have to spend some time and build that trust. Um, and it's not a simple, let's have a, an hour discussion on the phone and get there. So depending on how you know, severe. So I, I mean, that's, that's a long winded way of getting to that, but that's, I guess the ex- explanation behind the advice. So, so that, that's Andy's trust, but verify, right? That's where, yeah, that's exactly. There you go. Out, right. Well said. Well, that was a Trust great answer. I, I need to find I need to find harder things for to ask you next time. But look, thank <laughs> you again. It was it was great having sure. you on. Um, it's 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 always good talking to you, and we look forward to having you in Mumbai to eat some good food, drink some good booze next time. So thanks again yeah. for taking time to share your experiences, and you know we'll talk soon.
Happy to. Thank you. You take care. Yeah.